That is a magnificent century. Ah! Oh, bowls in. This is exceptional stuff. Brilliant bowling. You'll be able to follow it all on Sky Sports website and Twitter. I'll also be tweeting out the ball by ball. Practicing my out the ball by ball of a game that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to do a toss or not, Benny? Nasa, you've won the toss. What are you going to do this morning? Uh, we're going to have a ball. Hello and welcome to another Sky Sports Cricket Lockdown Vodcast. Now, this time, to celebrate 30 years of Sky Sports, we're going to come up with two World Elevens for another virtual test. Now, one of them is going to pretty much be Nasa's era, and the other one is going to be the era after that. So, Benedict, give us the rules. How are we going to decide this? Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we get to Benedict, please. Um, Rob, we haven't seen you on Sky for the last couple of weeks. You've had a bit of a health scare. Um, just for the nation, the nation have been worried. How are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm all right, actually. I had a bizarre weekend, I think, probably what? Not last weekend, two weekends ago, where I was just playing Xbox with my lad. I got up, and for about five seconds, I lost vision. Just, it was bizarre. And so we just rang that 111 and they said, just go and have yourself checked. Didn't think anything wrong. And then had a few scans. Nothing was the problem there as we went to Kent and Canterbury. But one of the consultants said, just stay around just for an MRI. And when I had the MRI, it turned out that I'd had a mini stroke. Uh, and so it's been like a week of just rest and recuperation, really. And at the moment, I feel pretty good. It's actually nice to be doing something. So you're OK now? Yeah, I'm not too bad. I just need to rest. You know, things like this just keep you going, really. It's just uh, something to do. It's one of those that when you sit around doing nothing, you start thinking, you know, overthinking everything. And this has been a, you know, it's been a, a, a long week, but now it seems to be coming just, you know, on the, on the road to recovery. Before we get on to Benny's rules, can I ask you a few questions? Is that all right? First of all, can I still abuse you throughout <laughs> this or not? Is that allowed? Do oh, you know what? I, I've been very moved by all the lovely messages, but the sympathy can do now, and we can actually just go back to how it was. Second question: What's with the glasses? Are they part of your recovery in some way, or they're not actually? It just sort of coincides with the fact that Fleur has got me these glasses, and she's got all the family these glasses that block out the blue light. I don't know if that works, but I actually think I look much better with them. I'm quite pleased with them at the moment. And my black top, everything seems to just be moving in the right direction. <laughs> How long into this process are you going to be playing the sympathy card? No, I, I'm done with it now. We can now move on. It depends on how stupid Benedict's fake test goes and whether, the, you know, the first one we did that you won and had all these great players like Cook who couldn't get a run and you had Angus Fraser and people knocking us over. Um, so we'll just see how long it lasts this time. Are you back on Twitter? I am. I'm back. But I couldn't get into Twitter. This is another thing, you know, all these problems come in one go. I've been locked out of Twitter. I'm now back and we'll be able to, well, continue this throughout the virtual test. After you got me to... Why well, this is like 20 questions. Can oh, we just move on? I haven't seen you we're for... Gonna have, we're going to have Coldplay playing Fix You in the background. I haven't, the I haven't seen you for a month. So I've got a few questions for you. After you got me the other day to plug your new Twitter account, did you <laughs> immediately, with the very first tweet, plug your new book that's coming out? Yes or no? Yes, I did, yeah. And is this the blurb from your new book, if I could read it out on the front? Ex-England batsman Rob Key is one of the wittiest pundits uh. on TV. Whether it is a drizzly day <laughs> night in Derby or a World Cup final at Lords, Key's wizardry with the mic more than matches what he had with the bat, which wasn't a lot. Continues, known as one of the <laughs> sharpest <laughs> cricketers Key casts a knowledgeable and sometimes acerbic. What does acerbic mean, Rob? <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I over such areas as fitness, <laughs> captaincy, and sledging. So that's um, that's your new book. So that's us done. Benny, 
Um, just the rules now, please, for me and uh, Michael McIntyre here. Just the rules now. <laughs> but we're trying to eliminate any potential controversy that plagued the first match between these two chaps. Um, well, we've... Hang on, is that when NASA basically asked you to pick his team? No, um, to be fair, NASA didn't ask me to pick his team. He asked whether players were eligible for his team. Preparation. Uh, Preparation. Continue the rules. Um, we've split the 30 years of Sky Cricket into two 15-year chunks. NASA's test career coincided precisely with the first 15, so he covers 1990 to 2004. And uh, your test career, alas, was a little bit shorter than 15 years, but you're taking control of the second chunk of 15 years. Now, obviously, many players crossed both eras. However, to avoid any hints of controversy, the era in which they played more years is where they are qualified for. So if a player debuted in 2003, but played till 2010, they had two years in NASA's era, six in Rob's, so he is available for Rob. So that should be crystal clear. Um, there are only a couple of players who have the same number of years in each camp. Um, if either of you pick them, which I'll keep their names secret for now, then it's the tiebreaker is the most matches they played in each particular era. Crystal clear? Crystal clear, Benedict. Alphabetical order. NASA has said you can go first. Okay, well done. Okay, my first pick in my era as an opener, I'm going to do this in batting lineup, is Big Matthew Hayden. Matthew? Who's Matthew? Matthew <laughs> Hayden. That's how we say his name in Essex. Matthew Hayden. Uh, the big bruiser from Queensland, wonderful test record, um, outstanding player, great statistics, big runs as well, got huge scores, um, top of the order, will bully any of the attack from your era, Bob, as he has done over the years. Brilliant player, Matthew Hayden. Uh, that may go all the way, and that's three figures for Matt Hayden. Another fantastic knock by the opening batsman. What was his nickname? Buzz Lightyear. I think Paul Collingwood <laughs> called him Buzz. <laughs> Beat that. He was a good player. All right, OK. So you've gone for a dasher. Well, he's, he was not just a dasher. He was a fantastic player. I'm going to try and match him, actually. Um, so I am going to go for a right-hander. And this guy was probably one of my favourite players ever to watch. I'm going to go for Verinda Sayway. In the air, and four, that's the hundred. It was a slightly risky stroke, uppish over cover, but uh, that epitomises the way he's played in this innings. It's his second Test match hundred, his first against England, and it's been full of rich entertainment. Benedict, give me some stats on Verinda Sewa. Twitter yeah. stats as well, Benny, because <laughs> this is to try and get Rob Key's Twitter count up. Carry on. Very simple one for Verinda Sewa. No one in the history of Test cricket has scored more runs at a better strike rate. And he did it at the top of the order and didn't really feel the pressure. He hit a six to reach India's first ever triple hundred in Test cricket. All right, all right, enough. Is this Test, is this going to be played in England? Because I think Sewag averaged in the 30s in England. Is that right, Benedict, or not? He did struggle. He didn't help um, getting a king pair when he was recalled. But... Uh, you never know. You've got 100 on test debut, so you never know with Verenda Selwag. You know that John Wright, my old mate, used to coach India. And I remember asking him about Sewag, and I said, right, you know, right, he had all these theories. Right, he glued his gloves to the bat once when he was a player. I said, how does someone with all your theories coach Verinda Sewag? And he said all he ever used to say to him was, Viru, play straight today, that's it. And he reckoned that Sewag never wanted to go to the gym because he felt it was too cold. And right, he said to him, hang up, if you run on those machines, you'll actually warm up. And Verinda Sewag didn't believe him. <laughs> Proper old school. So you're picking an old school cricketer in your <laughs> new modern era. Great stuff. OK, I've, I guess I need two openers. Um, I did struggle to find openers for my era. But since this was what the first game was on Sky, Sabina Park, I'm going to go with the captain of that game, Graham Gooch to open with Matthew Hayden. England oh, captain. Graham Gooch. Why not? Graham Gooch made his debut in 75 before I was born. Benny, I the first help. game on Sky, who was captain? Graham Gooch. Did he retire but in 97? Graham Gooch had 15 years pre-Sky. 
and only six in the in your era. I'm sorry, I cannot allow him. Yeah, Got to be transparent this time. Have to be transparent. <laughs> well, that means friend of the stars, Michael McIntyre over there. We can pick Joe Root or Ben Stokes, who could play till 2035 or something. How does that work? <laughs> well, well both ends. If you want to pick Gooch, he could may as well pick Tendulkar. He debuted 15 years before his era started. Yeah, I'll well, be a race for that one. All right, so I'm not allowed Gooch. No, Sorry, no. <laughs> not allowed Gooch. Right. Apparently, Michael Atherton was a bit upset having been left out of the last game. He's still available. How could I not pick Ath in my England 11 but pick him in my world 11? Anyway, get on with it. Come on. Right. I'm struggling. I'm not struggling. That's going to downplay my opener. Uh, a lad who didn't play enough for England, if he had played more, would have become one of the greatest openers of all time. He was pretty good anyway. Marcus Truscothic. Right. Abs- Sorry, Rob. <laughs> Did you say he's Mark Lathwell? No, Marcus Friscoffi. <laughs> top guy, top player, outstanding player of spin. Um, if you've got any spinners in your side, that is. Um, so I'm going Triscothic and Hayden. I'd have liked right hand, left hand, Gooch and Hayden, but the absurdity of the rules means I'll stick with Triscothic and Hayden. What, no Slater, no Langer, people like that. So you decide Amwai you had the other day. Uh, yeah, I'm the... I didn't want Hayden and Lang. It was just packing my side with Aussies. I'm just the, the mental damage, and and I could just hear you as well. It also means I wouldn't have many Englishmen in my side. <laughs> and I can just hear that silly laugh on those messages you leave me on the phone. <laughs> so no, I've had to go Trez and Hayden. I'm happy with those two, to be honest. That's a good start. Wait till what you have got in the middle order. Well, my number two. I'm going for my captain. Um, could have gone Cook, but Cook had a shocker in the last test match that you did, Benedict. So I'm not picking Alistair. I'm going to pick Graham Smith. Turn the gap again, Graham Smith. And this is his double century. Another double century for Graham Smith. In consecutive test matches. Oh, we can't get any happier than that. Looking up to the sky as it did in the first test match. The whole balcony up there are all out there to clap for him. And everyone here at Laws are on their feet. What's his name, Smith? <laughs> <laughs> I did have a note here on him. What, is, what happened that you... Did you genuinely forget his name? It's a long story, but I was at Trent Bridge and I was working for Sky. It was one of my first gigs, actually. And some of the Sunday newspaper guys were there. And they said, Nas, Nas, can I have a word with you? You're the captain. And they got me into this little room. And they said, what about their captain? And there was a lad playing for knots at that stage called Greg Smith. And I went, yeah, Greg, uh, Graham, what's his name? Smith uh, is a very fine leader. And the next day's headline was, he forgot his name. And then he got 250 in the first test match. And the headline in the paper was, you know his name now, Nas. So... I might have forgotten his name. Very good player. Is he going to be your captain or are we going to put captains at the end? Well, I'm going to throw my cards out on the table early. I've got him as my captain. Did you drop him as well? Right. Do we have to go through every one of my misdemeanours in this? Yeah, I dropped him at Lords. I'm sure that will make the footage of this. He was on seven or eight and he made two, another 250, 260. Thanks for bringing that up, Rob. You were playing for Kent under 19s at that stage when we were doing that. Right, can we move on to my team now? Number three, I think possibly the most dynamic number three I have seen. I can't have Viv Richards. I'd love to have Viv Richards, but again, Benny's rules, even though he played in my era, I can't have him because he once picked up a bat in an era before. Um, So I'm going to go Ricky Ponting. A first Test match century for Ricky Ponting. And it's all the more sweet when it comes against England, the old enemy. Coming in one wicket down, you never knew that Australia would were never in trouble, but he would just always take the attack to the opposition. Wonderful player, um, outstanding slip fielder, and he's going to be my captain. I don't think anyone on the planet can argue with Ricky Ponting in a world he Was he a great captain? I think he was a pretty good captain, yeah. We're going to come on to that because I've obviously got other options and there's been a bit of tension, hasn't there, recently with Warren and War. And I'm, I have to try and fit in. Can I fit in Warren and War? Do I make Shane my captain? 
I think Shane makes my side, to be honest, but <laughs> I'm keeping my caps in or not. But I think I'm going to go Ricky Ponting. Right, my number three. This seems to be taking forever, only on number three. My number three is, and he's not going to be keeping, and there's a very good reason for this, which, Benedict, I want you to explain, is Kumar Sanger Carr. Gotcha. Goes for the shot, goes just wide of the man, and there it is. 100 for Sangakara at Lords. Name on the board. Brilliant from him. Brilliant from Sri Lanka. How good is that? Wonderful knock from Kumar Sangakara. From the moment he walked in, boundary off the very first ball, and look at the joy. Benedict, can you tell me? what Kumar Sangakara's average was, not as a keeper. When he was the keeper, he averaged 40. When he didn't keep, he averaged 66. You, you knew that. Why did you ask Benny that? Because this just makes a mockery of all those pundits, Ed Hussein, who like to say Johnny Bairstow can do both jobs. You know, Kumar Sangakara, one of the greatest ever, averaged 66 when he wasn't keeping. So that is why he comes in as my number three, but he is not going to keep. And I hope, Benedict, that the finger went wagging. Simulation reflects that because it didn't do it in the last one. So I hope it does it in this one. Don't be bullied by him, Benny. Stay strong. Don't be bullied. Seriously. By the way, didn't I play quite a bit against Kumar Sangakara? It was not about who you played against. It's about who played more, as Benedict spoke about earlier on. So move on. Four years, Nas. 1992, whenever, yeah. Um, okay, who am I going? Number four. I've gone Ponting, Hayden, and Truscothic. Can I, can I ask, I know you get a bit touchy about this, Rob, but can I ask a statistical question to our statistician like you just did or not? There you go. Okay, thanks. Um, if I had Tendul Kalara, which, in which order should I have them, Benny? Which, where do they bat more, would you say? I don't know if you've heard of those two, Sachin Tendulkar and Brian Charles Lara. Well, Sachin and Lara, four and five. And notoriously, Sachin never wants to bat number three. He spent most of his career at number four. Lara, again, most at number four, a little bit at number five. I'm um, really up to you. I don't want to upset Sachin. I'm going to go Sachin at four. Tendulkar is a good enough player to hit it through straight mid on. And that is a magnificent century from uh, Sachin Tendulkar. He overtakes Don Bradman now. I don't know if you've got any of Sachin's stats there. Benny, just remind me of his stats in Test Match Cricket, please. Well, he had a massively long career. Played 200. Thanks, Benedict. Anyone else? <laughs> 1,000 runs. 5,100s. 5,100s. Also took 46 wickets if you need, a, if you need an extra spinner. I don't think with Murali and Warren I'm going to need another spinner, Benny, but thank you very much. I'm going to go Sachin Tendulkar batting at four. Please try and beat Sachin at four, Rob. Well, interestingly, I think I can beat him in one day cricket, but this is obviously a test. <laughs> OK. My number four is another Indian, and I'm going to go for Virat Kohli. Now, I don't think that Kohli can get close to Sachin as far as test cricket is concerned. But overall, I reckon Coley, if you talk about all formats and you meshed them all together, Benedict, and you somehow tried to put the stats and you came up with every single thing, you would find that Coley is better than Sachin. Funny you mention that. Um, in the, if you look at decades, um, in the decade of the 2010s, running from 2010 to 2019, he scored more international runs in all forms than anyone has ever made in any decade in history. Pushed it away behind square and a remarkable player has adorned a remarkable day's cricket. A 22nd Test 100 for Virat Kohli, his first in England. So is he better than Sachin or not? Oh, I'm not going to upset a billion people. <laughs> I'll sit on the Nick Knight fence for that. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Anyway. Poor old Knighty getting slated in our podcast by Benedict. That's by Benedict. <laughs> he did Freddie, said Freddie in the last one, now he's done Knighty. <laughs> um, yeah, good, good. Virat, I, mean, good. I mean, you've been texting me for years now saying you think Virat's a little bit overrated and now you've picked him <laughs> in your world 11. Well done, Rob. 
Um, all right, so that's uh, Kendall. I've, I've show, shown you my cards, really. Brian, Lara, you know, the king of big scores. One of the great players ever. Um, just a left-hander with flair. Outstanding cricketer. Really was so watchable. Unbelievable. I mean, it's nice as well, the way it's going. Ponting, flair, Tendulkar over my dead body. Lara, flair. This is also a very, very watchable side. I'm not sure yours is at the moment. Mine is an incredibly watchable side. I mean, what a stupid thing to say. It's a watchable side. It's a world 11. We're picking the best players of all time. Well, of the last 30 years, of course, they're going to be watchable. I mean, we're not going in there with Mark Richardson. <laughs> the life out. Of it. Oh, I mean, what a nonsense. Um, did you, was Lara someone you sledged? Is it true that Lara, you don't, you never said, no one said anything to Lara because that just made him play better? Yeah, he had, he had an on-off switch, definitely. He was someone that if he just kept quiet, he'll still be very good. But I think the Australians in his first series went at him and then he got 250 <laughs> at Sydney and they quickly realised, don't sledge Lara. I mean, that the two games I played at Antigua, I, I wasn't playing the first one, I fielded most of it. He got, what, 375 and then he got 401 or whatever when we went back there four years later. And he looked at me when your, your mates Flintoff and Armisen were bowling at him and he just looked at me when he was about 100 not out to say... I think I'm going to get a big one here. So once he knew, once he was up for it, he was an incredibly difficult man to dismiss. So my top four, reasonably good, Hayden Triscothic, Ponting, Tendulkar, Lara, top five. No, I was going to say that's five people. <laughs> right, my number five, Steve Smith, pretty simple. I mean, the bloke, I mean, we can talk, we can watch, you know, Langer behaving like a numpty on that test documentary. And going on about elite honesty and elite mateship and all of this. But let's get it right. Steve Smith has won the last two Ashes series. Or, all right, they tied it, but he's retained the Ashes and he's won the Ashes for that Australian team because he is that. Full, driven away. Back-to-back -back hundreds in the same test match for Stephen Smith. He joins an elite group of Australians who have done that. Only four others in Ashes Test. Redemption is well and truly complete. Are you going to pick any England players in your side or not? Yeah, I've got one coming up soon. Got one coming up. So yeah, have you got Root in there or not? Well, come on. Root in there. Well, how can I have Joe Root when I've got... He, well, he did open, but I've got Saywag and Smith. I've got Sangakara three, Coley four, Steve Smith five. It's, you know, I think you can't argue with that team. You haven't got him in your World 11. You haven't got him in your 11, England 11 of the, this era we're in. I'm looking forward to your Joe Root interview at the Aegeus Bowl <laughs> after that first test match. Social distancing at its best. That's going to be <laughs> Right. Number six, I can't have Beefy because he once picked up a bat before my era. Um, All-rounder. Man who doesn't get mentioned a lot and actually played in both eras, Rob. But he's one, he, he could get in your side as a batsman, a bowler and a fielder. Jack Callis, get on with it. Jack Callis. Short has hit on the back foot. Now this could be Jack Callis' second Test match 100. And it races away and he's delighted. What a lovely way to bring it. Two boundaries, consecutive balls. He wasn't having it to do with the nervous 90s. He really has played well. I mean, you'd love to have him. I know you want to have him. We would ask a few questions about Freddie. I'm sure you've got Freddie in your side, but I'm going to go Callis, just a no-brainer. Brilliant with the ball, outstanding batsman, brilliant at slip. What I like is how you're trying to play like these are some sort of surprise, the people you're picking, you know, like trying to tee us up as if you're not going to pick Jack Callis. I mean, one of the greatest. So far, you've almost got, you've just basically picked the top four run scorers of all time in Test cricket. Mind you, you've missed Dravid. Which of my middle order am I leaving out for Dravid? I thought, I, I emailed Benny to say, as Dravid, how many, how many times has Dravid opened in Test, Benny? Um, 
After his Nick Knight game, come on. <laughs> well, he opened 23 times. Right. So I nearly went drabbing, but that would be pushing the rules to the limit, really. So, Raul, I couldn't, couldn't get Raul. Just tell us about Callis. Was he close to both eras, would you say? Benny, does he just fit in my era? You're fine with Callis. He had uh, 10 years in your era, nine years in uh, Keezy's. Are you playing the extra batter or are you going all rounder, Rob? No, I'm going all rounder and I'm going for statistically. This is what annoys me about this stupid fake game is that it doesn't take into account how good this bloke is. Now, I'm going for Ben Stokes because there is no question he is the all rounder of this generation. But statistically, he doesn't stack up against Callis with all his runs, his wicked stuff like that. I want your fake test, Benedict, to actually reflect these players at their best. So Ben Stokes, average, well, I've got here, he averaged 36 with, at the moment with the bat. He is a better player than that. And I want you to tell your little computer that when you put his name in. Sorry, sorry. so for example, if you had picked yourself in this World eleven. Benny's computer has to just put in your 200 at Lords and forget all the other rubbish that you've dished out in your career. <laughs> it just has key double hundred. That's it. That's how you want this to be formulated. No, I'm just saying that Ben Stokes is better than his statistics will rely. And all you did in the last one is you picked the person with the biggest average or the best average. And I want this to reflect something more than just people with a good average. This bloke's the best all-rounder in the world. He's the best cricketer in the world at the moment. It should reflect that. Cut away, cut away for four. What an innings, what a player. Take a bow, Ben Stokes. The ash is well and truly alive because of one cricketer. And that cricketer is Benjamin Stokes, the cricketer for England in 2019. Incredible scenes. I mean, you, you did bat him at four in the last one, and then he played three batters and eight, eight bowlers, and that's maybe why you lost. It's nice to see you got a better, better balanced side now. So, yes, I, I agree with that. Stats are for Pratt's, as you well documented in the last one. I completely agree with that. Stokes is so much better than his stats. It is just the one thing I should say to use the well-used phrase, it is a small sample size of one match. And uh, look at the Ashes, 2019, Ben Stokes world beating. 2015 Ashes, three ducks, more than anyone else in the series. I know it's four years on, but this is a, we're only talking one match and anything can happen, as Rob's double hundred against the West Indies um, bears testament to. Another excellent point, Benedict. Do we know if we can mute people? <laughs> <laughs> Where am I up to? Six. I've got to go wicket keeper. I wanted Sangakara, but he fell out of my ear. Yeah, I've, I've done six. So I'm going on to number seven. Where am I up to six? Well, no, you're, you're I'm up to six. I'm moving on to seven. Up to um, seven. <laughs> I'm go I need a keeper, I guess. And <laughs> I'm going to go. I, I wanted Sanga, but I'm going to go Adam Gilchrist. Yeah. Oh, he's got it. He's just spooned it over the keeper. It's a deliberate stroke. And Gilchrist is delighted. It's his first Ashes Test century. He's third in all. Been a wonderful innings. Scored at a great pace, 103 from 118 balls. And it's the third century of this innings. Game-changing wicketkeeper batsman. Um, very good with the gloves. Shane plays him down a little bit with the gloves, but I think he's... Blooming good, I'll throw Shane under the bus there a little bit. <laughs> um, but um, no, I, think, I think as a batsman, he changed the face of Test Match Cricket, the way he came in and smashed it. And could you imagine if your side have this side 400 for five, then Adam Gilchrist comes in, you know, it's just going to be ridiculous. So Gilly at seven, I'm not sure I need anyone else, but that's my top seven. Speak, I agree, look, obviously, Adam Gilchrist. Speaking of Shane... Um, no Steve War in your... Um... <laughs> Why'd you say that? Why'd you put those two yeah. together? Has Warney been bullying you? You know, you can't pick the two of the same team. I mean, what? no Steve War, one of the toughest cricketers of all time. 
if Shane gets some wickets in this process, we might try and get hold of him. And I won't <laughs> speak to him if I've got Steve Warren <laughs> and the captain. So I couldn't think. And before Callis, I was a bit worried about Callis being in your era. I was going to get Steve War at six and bowl a few overs. But moment, as you just said, the moment you have Callis available, you take Callis. So I didn't want to play the extra batsman. You just worry about your side, yeah? Well, my side, this is where I'm taking a liberty. Because my number seven, I reckon. Now, don't worry about telling your computer to put him in with his stats as a keeper batting. I'm going for your big mate, A.B. De Villa. Big shout, but it might be the single that he was looking for. It is three figures for A.B. De Villiers. This has been an outstanding exhibition of batsmanship from A.B. De Villiers. He worked hard yesterday. It's the slowest of his Test Match 100s, and that reflects the conditions and the fact that he's had to work hard. But it's a wonderful innings for his team. We're on the keepers now, aren't we? Yeah, well, did he not keep? Did AB not keep? I mean, you did that lovely masterclass where you said, Oh, AB, you can, you know, he's good at tennis, he can scratch golf. <laughs> you know, he's won in the Pandemic. At stage did we do his keeping in that masterclass? <laughs> you brought up a masterclass to back up his keeping, and he <laughs> didn't keep in that. So, well, I mean, imagine, imagine picking a part time keeper that drops Tendulka or <laughs> Lara or North. I mean, that keeper from Durham dropped Tendulka. Uh, Lara or not, he ended up getting 501 or something. You've put, <laughs> you've put AB under pressure there. Seriously, how many times did AB keep in tests, Benny? You kept in 24 test matches and averaged 57 with the bat when keeping. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's keeping. We're talking about his keeping. Oh, I knew it. That's <laughs> why. That's why you just you know when you just watch things and you just see the world so differently you, just, you know you just you just have a feeling and you have a sense and it always comes out right there you go what was that been it 57 maybe best yeah, okay. the gloves. um move sorry on. so you have absolutely nailed me for giving batsmen the gloves and then you've done exactly the same with de villiers you've done you've nailed me for sangakara you've nailed me for besto but you've done that with De Villiers. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'm a little bit jealous you've got AB at your side. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got Vera. <laughs> Listen, right, we're on to the bowlers now on my side. And as you can see from my era, you, I might as well just have a hat here now and just pick out. Wazim, tough. Wazim <laughs> Wakar, Shane, McGrath, Murali. Donald, Pollock, I mean, choose. you can have, choose whatever you want, really. So I honestly don't care. They're all just so much better in that era. I'm going to go, just to give me a bit of left arm option, he got a few runs as well down the order, not that I'm going to need any. Um, Marshall, I can't pick. I'd love to pick Malcolm Marshall. You stop going on about who you can't pick. Of course you can't pick. You can't pick Fred Truman. Just get on with who you are going to pick. <laughs> a little bit tense, isn't he? Eh? Um, Wazim Akram. Oh, that's got him. Beautifully bowled by Wasim Akram. Into the wind, but that was no problem for him. Marcus Descothic on his way out, comprehensively beaten. There goes the stump. England's first wicket falls. One of the great fast bowlers of all time. Left arm option. It will reverse. A um, little bit of footholes out there. He's just magnificent. I'm going to go Wasim Akram. Your bowling actually must be quite hard to pick because they are, as you say, all so good. No, not hard to pick at all, Rob. Oh, really? So you can decide who your best bowlers are? Fair enough. Very well. Um, I'm going to go for, and this is where, again, see, my people are at the, you know, different stages of their career. I watched this bloke this summer. I thought he was outstanding. Um, all the players, when you speak to them, the England players, they say he was the toughest to face. I'm going to go for Pat Cummings. Ball maidens build pressure. He can't believe it, Joe Root. It's the excellent Cummings again. Pitches does enough. It's a beauty. Benedict, tell me Pat Cummings is average with the ball at the moment. And how I think he's played what, 30 tests? Yeah, he's played 30 tests, 143 wickets at 21.82. Sorry, what was that? Tw what, was that 21? Well, honestly, can't work you out. You live half your life. You live half your life complaining about stats and saying, oh, Ben Stokes, the stats don't count. 
And then when he mentions A.B. de Villiers batting as a keeper and <laughs> Cummins getting him at 21, that's the most important thing in the whole process. Um, no, good shout, Pat Cummins. Again, he could play for another 40 years or something, so it's a little bit unfair that you can have him longer than I could have some of my players, but um, so be it. Pat Cummins. So I've gone Wazim at eight. I uh, need a bit of spin. The greatest bowler that has ever played the game. Amazing. Amazing. You can't have any World Eleven, all time World Eleven. Shane Warne is your bowler, he's your spinner. Yeah, this is where your side, actually, when I was looking at it, because growing up watching your era, all these players, again, they're your heroes. They're the ones that we all wanted to be. The spin department, your era, there's absolutely no debate. You've got the best spinners by a mile. I mean, the people can't even get in your side are better than the spinners I could have chosen. Benny, just a ruling here. Do we, we have to pick a spinner, yeah? Yes. Okay. What do you mean we have to pick a spinner? Uh, I know sometimes you try and bend the rules and you just play four seamers or something, so... No, well, I've got my spinner anyway. I'm just checking. That's right. Okay. My number nine, we did a great podcast. Well, not us doing it. They were fantastic. I reckon this bloke, I couldn't believe how humble he was on our vodcast. But also, what you pointed out on that was just how great he was as well. Uh, one of the bowlers of this generation, Dale Stane. Oh, beautifully bowled. Dale Stane has got exactly what he wants from the last ball of the over. That's a wonderful delivery. Michael Vaughan has to go. His off stump is out of the ground. 439 wickets at 22. Isn't his strike rate better or wasn't it? There's some ridiculous world record that he has, Benedict, isn't it? He's got the best strike rate of any bowler with more than 200 test wickets. Rabada is just short of, 100, of uh, 200 currently, but Stain currently the best strike rate of any bowler with at least 200 test wickets. Oh, Rabada. <laughs> Benny, Benny, <laughs> can we not give him any help, please, Benny? Seriously. Hey. Okay? <laughs> That's pretty good. Cummins and uh, Stain is pretty good up front. If it swings as well, geez, that's a serious uh, attack. Are they taking the new ball? No, they won't take the new ball, actually. I think Cummins will be my first change. Right. Okay. So I've got Wazim and Shane, and obviously the other, the leading wicket taker ever in Test match cricket, bloke who spun it both ways, Kezi has said. Greatest bowler ever to play the game. On that first few podcasts <laughs> we did in Sri Lanka, he just dropped his name 700 times in the first two podcasts. I'm a tired Merylithran. Gone. Great work. Top class cricket from the Sri Lankans. Mark Butcher had a real problem out there. And in the end, the Sri Lankans were too good for him. Absolutely outstanding bowler. I absolutely have no clue playing this lad you knew just did not know which way the ball was going to spin completely clueless against him so tricky to bat against I mean imagine if it starts to spin and I've got Murali one end and Warren the other <laughs> uh, who's your spinner Rob just before we get on to that I'm the mate tell me you got one you need one bowler to win you the game Muralithran or Warren who are you going for one you can only have one of those Warren every time really yeah every time just he had so much bottle. He was a man for pressure. Saw that in the 2005 Ashes series when everyone else was crumbling around him. Warren stood up. Um, had a huge heart, real fight, real character. Shame Warren. Absol absolutely every single time. I told this story in the podcast about Murray. He's quite a good mate of mine. <laughs> and he's one of those. Got like oh, really? childlike, he's got childlike innocence, but he's very cruel with it. But he doesn't know he's being cruel. And I remember last time I saw him, he calls my wife Fleur, Fleur. So he says, Keezy, how is Fleur? I said, no, she's good, Mazza. And he just said, I think you're very lucky to have Fleur. I said, well, why is that, Mazza? Irish. You not have face for ladies. <laughs> I said, what? I said, who on earth do you think you are, you boggle on <laughs> freak having a go at me? What about you? You know, but... One of the greatest blow. Him and Warren, actually. Well, two of the greatest. Right, we just have your Sri Lankan impersonation again. <laughs> <laughs> Not only the wittiest pundit on TV, but he <laughs> the on impersonation as well. 
right, okay. We go spinner or not? You're just going to leave that to 11. Don't worry about it. My spinner's there. Um, I'm going to go number 10. The other part of our fabulous vodcast that you can still see on the Sky Cricket YouTube channel, James Anderson. Now, you had him last time, which was outrageous, in the 90s team, and he ended up getting five. For I am going for 584 test wickets, James Anderson. Oh, what a beauty. What an incredible delivery that is. He pops past Truman. 308 wickets and one of the best he'll ever take. And one of the most important in the context of this possibly this summer from England's point of view. Who's your spinner? He can't bat much if he's batting off. My right, team, you pick yours. After Go. Jimmy, I'm worried about your batting lineup if someone's coming in after Jimmy. Uh, good shout. Anderson and Stane Cummins, proper, proper attack. Um, who have I got left? 10. I've got pace, got all round. I've got two spinners. I want a bit of. Metronomic accuracy. Um, I'm going to go with Glenn McGrath. Oh, Vaughan's gone now. Off stump out of the ground. McGrath, three wickets in half an hour after tea. The England captain has gone. His off stump polaxed. Well, you've got a few left handers in there as well, haven't you? You've got Smith and Sangakara up there. McGrath was just round the wicket. Brilliant to left handers. It's not like Andrew Strauss, is it? Who just schnicked off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing Strauss under the bus. No, he's not on Twitter or anything like that. You're not bothered, really. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go McGraw. Just didn't give runs away. McGraw one end, Warren the other. Accuracy, wicket-taking potential. You know, that is just outstanding. So my attack of Akram and McGraw with a new ball Murali and Warren to spin. Callis for a few overs and then Akram again when it reverses. That is unplayable, that attack. Best ever. No Pollock, Donald, people like that couldn't get in. Ambrose, Walsh, all these people. Yeah, I know. I mean, you, there were some very, very fine, but I don't know which one of those you can leave out, really. I mean, Akram, I found Akram. Some of this is a, is a personal thing as well, isn't it? When you... When you've played against these guys, Wazin, when he was reversing it with that quick arm, you had no clue which way it was going. 90 mile an hour, hit you on the foot, hit you on the head. I remember Gucci telling me, we were playing a counter game at Old Trafford, and I went up to Gucci, and it was reversing. I said, you seem to be playing him so easy. And Gucci said, just, just watch as he holds the ball like that at the end of his run. And I said, my minces. I'm <laughs> and then he started to do all this, and whoosh. Gone, completely bamboozled me. You know, Akram McGrath, Warren Murali, Callis, couldn't get the others in. My number 11, now he hasn't played a lot, this guy, um, but I think he is potentially going to be the best bowler in the world in the years to come. Um, and that is Jasper Bumra. Say that again. <laughs> I don't know why I went for the Jasper. Is that even right? Is it is it is it Jas? <laughs> I mean, if you whisper it, no one will hear it. Rob, <laughs> I don't know why. You know, when you're doing commentary and you just think, why have I tried like fuck our Zaman? Why don't you say Zaman? You don't have to say fuck our Zaman. I've said it twice now. I'm like it's like a grenade at the moment. Uh, I'm going for uh, Bumrah. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you on commentary when Jasper Bumra bowls to Matai Murali <laughs> with Rob Key on comms. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you actually going to talk anything about the bowler or just going to absolutely... No, I, I, he's slightly awkward, isn't he? He looks... I remember that spell of bowling he did at Keaton Jennings when we were doing... Where were we at? Southampton. And Jennings was struggling. And he sort of like, you just thought he was never, ever with that sort of straight arm. I mean, he's like a circus act when he comes in. Isn't he? But he, he somehow managed to swing the ball. Like him, at Anderson, the stone, their wrist, same Wazim Akram and the guys you've got. But that wrist, you know, all the bowling coaches talk about this and their arms and run-ups and everything. But these guys have all got the greatest wrists of all time. And that's how they move the ball. And that bit of bowling to get rid of Keaton Jennings. I remember just thinking, oh, you don't have to worry about the ball coming back in. And then all of a sudden, across, across, zoom, LBW. I think he's shouldered arms. Um, that's, that's the difference in here, isn't it? The name, the bowlers I picked 
you were just wow in admiration. I asked you why Bumra, and you said because he's slightly awkward. You know, what I mean, <laughs> that's just the difference in eras, isn't it? Really, who did you have to leave out? Who were your ones that you thought long and hard about? Well, people like Rabada, um, and then you had like Mitchell Johnson, Stuart Broad, people like that. You know, but the thing is, Mitchell Johnson sort of had one great series, didn't he? As good as he was. Whereas if his whole career was on that one Ashes series, he's probably one of the best bowlers ever. But over a period of time, um, you couldn't get in. Now, you haven't picked up on the fact, though. I know, I'm waiting. I'm, you've picked 11, have you? Yeah. You, you could have taken over 12, just... or is Virenda Selag your spinner? Yeah, Benny, wasn't there a ruling about you had to have a spinner? Yeah, yeah and so... my spinner is Steve Smith. Oh, come on. Come on, Benny. Did you not see the watch along the other day? And the watch along the other day was batting eight in the World T20 and being a leg spinner bowling pies. Warney so, reckons he's the greatest number eight who's ever lived. What's wrong with that? that sentence is the watch along in T20. This is a world test 11. You've not picked a spinner. He's not taken a test wicket for four years. Oh, so he's taken a test wicket, has he, Benedict? That's not, not in the last four years. No, but he's taken test wickets as a leg spinner. Mark, Mark Butcher's taken a test wicket. You've got Gary Kirsten out. Doesn't, he's not my spinner, is he? Come on now. All right, OK. Here so, all right, we can... All right, so if I can't have Bumrah, you see now this is where it's a pain because, you know, the one who's statistically the best is this right in my era is Ashwood. Benedict? Well, it depends what you um, call statistically wise. I mean, you could well, got this average. I mean, Jesus, what? Alvin, Jadeja. Jadeja's bowling average is very good. Nathan Lyon. He's floundering here. He is. <laughs> well, Rob, I didn't want to pick Ashwood because I refuse to have someone in my side that does man cads. I can't. Uh, they just, I know it's all part of the game and all the bowlers can start hammering me and, you know, it's all part of it. But Annie Mancad, one of my big mates, Joss Butler. So I'm not having. <laughs> Love you, Joss. Love you. One I did like, but again, I don't know how your, you know, stupid computer would work it out, was Ajmal at his best. Ajmal at his best was excellent. Graham Swan. But I think then, if you're going to make me pick a spinner, the spinner of this generation is probably, sad to say, Nathan Lyon. Is that fair? Why, why sad to say? Well, well, he's an Aussie, isn't he? I mean... <laughs> He just looks like he's just he just looks like he's a bit annoying. Do you know when you really watch TV and you just you start goggle box and you you know you just when they speak you just oh shut up mate. He's, you know he's calling people out, he's an off spinner. What are you doing that for? You know, Nathan I think you're not Glenn McGrath. You know, so you know he's a great bowler, but and he's probably the nicest lad in the world, but you know, I have that. Don't try and drag it back now. Do not try and drag it back. No. Oh, I'm going to love it when the boss sends you down to interview Nathan Lyon in the next half. <laughs> 390 test wickets. I mean, that's not bad for a finger spinner in this era. Yeah, but it's not as good as Jasper Bumrah. <laughs> so, is it Lyon for Bumrah? Is that, is that your final 11? You're, you're, you're ditching Jasper? Well, yeah, I am because I'm not going to leave out Anderson, Stain, Cummins. Um, so, Lyon for. Yeah. Yeah! The little bit of patience from Nathan Lyon just pays off and Jason Roy has completely got this wrong. Catch! Yeah! Oh, gone. That's gone. That's a good yeah! catch. And it's the England captain. This is your gylo moment, isn't it? You haven't exactly big up <laughs> Nathan Lyon here, is it? You've not <laughs> said, Nathan, I've wanted you in selection here, have you? Yeah, but I, I don't know Nathan Lyon. You know, you know Ashley Giles. You played with Ashley Giles. And, and by the way, this great era of yours that you love, you know, how much, you know, how great the Thorpes and, you know, all these players that you wanted to pick, you picked one Englishman. How many have you picked? Two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> and no Freddie. I mean, that... Freddie's that's... not in my era. Freddie's in your era. I want, that, I want that clear. Freddie's not in my era. Otherwise, of course, I would have picked Freddie. <laughs> right. Let... What era would Freddie be? Yours now. Seven years in your era, only five in Rob's. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Freddie, can't leave you out because of Jacques Callis. Um, name the two sides, said Ben. If you can read it, I'm guessing Lyons batting above Anderson now, Rob, is he? 
Yeah, it's who cares really. I mean, <laughs> not number two. He's going to bat ten or eleven. I mean, if you're batting ten or eleven, no one should ever discuss their batting ever. Lyon did go an entire Ashes series without being dismissed a number of years ago. Nasser Hussain's early Sky 11, Matthew Hayden, Marcus Treskothic, Ricky Ponting, captain, Sachin Tendulkar, Brian Lara, Jacques Callis, Adam Gilchrist keeping wicket, Wazim Akram, Shane Warne, Mattia Muralitharan and Glenn McGrath. Rob Key's late Sky 11, Virenda Sewag, Graham Smith, the captain, Kumar Sangakara, Virat Kohli, Steve Smith, Ben Stokes, A.B. de Villiers, keeping wicket, Pat Cummins, Dale Stain, Nathan Lyon and James Anderson. Now, I had two good teams. I, I, interestingly, you know, when you start picking those world 11s, I mean, I've missed out Root, Williamson, people like that. Statistically, Benedict, they're all very, very good, aren't they? Very good players. I mean, lots of players there averaging over 50 in Test cricket, which is the benchmark of true greatness. Nowadays, there aren't what, many... What do you make of 37? <laughs> um, average. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got that. Sorry, I went over my head. <laughs> Anyone did you think really you struggled with, you wanted to get in, that you just couldn't get in? To only, be only the batting. The, the batting was tough because I think I could have had Jai Wardner, I could have had Joe Root. And then I was watching the other day on 2015, Joe Root played magnificently against Australia at Trent Bridge. Um, you know, Pajara, I was thinking about Pajara coming in, you know, for my Indian followers. I did think. <laughs> <laughs> um, Talking of which, I wanted Dravid. I couldn't get how I've left Dravid out just shows how many. Good players there were. The wall, I wanted him at three, but Lara, Tendulka and Ponting were just too good, I'm afraid. It's interesting that the top of the order was where I struggled, really. I mean, Hayden and Lang, I should have probably gone Hayden and Lang. It was just that anti-Aussie in me couldn't go with those two. Um, but just shows maybe at the top of the order in my era, with all those fast bowlers around, it was probably a difficult place to bat. Right when, it, right, when is this game going to take place and where? Because we didn't even find out where the last Test match was that we did, you know, and the fast that that was. When is this going to take place, Benedict? And uh, how, I suppose, you look on Twitter and things like that for the results every day. Yep, it's, we're going to go old school, Thursday to Monday. So we're going to start this coming Thursday. So our match is going to be played at Lords. So conditions are right for Lords. So Graham Smith, and oh. Steve Smith will both be uh, licking their lips. Why didn't I know that before we picked the sides? Do any of us know oh. that? I want to change my spinner now. You'd be in it, Keezy. You'd made it with double <laughs> hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, well, you'll be able to follow it all on Sky Sports website and Twitter. I'll also be tweeting out the ball-by-ball -ball, uh, score sheets at the end of each session. Um, I mean, how sad is your life? I've been mean, practicing my ball by ball of a game that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Fleur, what are you doing? Do you know what? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm tweeting out a ball by ball <laughs> of a fake game. I mean, rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. Hold on. Are we going to do a toss or not, Benny? Well, who won the top? We can. Uh, who won the toss last? And NASA won the toss last time. What's that got to do with it? You don't turn up to the second <laughs> test of the series and go, oh, "Did you win the toss last time? We'll do what we won." I'm just <laughs> remind, I'm remind, I'm reminding myself what happened last time. Yeah, we could we could do a toss. Right, you got, you got a, coin? a coin. I have got a coin somewhere. I'll toss the coin. Easy can call this time. Call in the air. Heads. He's dropped the coin. <laughs> it is a head. No, it is a head. Rob. What would you like to do? What are the conditions like? Is it overcast or? London's weather forecast for Thursday is 25 degrees and warm. Or oh, I might need to get another spinner in yet. Can I change my team? You haven't got another spinner. You struggle to find one. I'll, um, uh, we will have a bat. That's a blow. That is a blow with Murley and Warren in the side. I mean, <laughs> batting last against those two. That is a blow. Jeez. <laughs> right, good luck, Rob. Go well, mate. Good luck, Nass. Um, Benedict, 
Vlad, thank you so much. Uh, we will find out on Thursday and the days after that who wins this fantastic idea of the test simulation that Benedict has. Um, 30 years of Sky Sports cricket. If there's ever been an excuse just to do one of our nonsense tests, that is it. Um, stay as well as everyone possibly can. And remember, you can watch this on the new Sky Cricket YouTube channel along with so much other content that's on there. Um, please, everyone, stay as well as you possibly can. Welcome back, Rob. Great to have you back. <laughs>